You know, it's sad but true. The automotive industry is turning a lot more electric nowadays, which of course for car enthusiasts like myself is kind of sad because we love our gas burners, our big V8s, the amazing sounds that they make. But some of the electric cars can be really, really cool. And what's the first brand you think of when you hear electric car? Tesla. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to that car vlog channel. If you don't already know, my name is Andy and today we are checking out a 2022 Tesla Model Y. We'll go on a full tour of this thing inside and out, show you all the features and what this car is all about. Then we'll get it out on the road, take it for a test drive and see what it's like to drive this machine. This will be my first Tesla. I'm super excited for this. Before we begin, special thanks to Twin City Certified of Maryville, Tennessee for providing the vehicle for today's video. Once you're done here, be sure to check them out at the link in the description below. Now, once again, like I said, this is a 2022 Tesla Model Y. I'd like to start out by talking about the trim levels and the performance specs on your Model Y. So this particular example is your long range dual motor edition. All your Model Ys are dual motor, so all wheel drive, and they come in two levels, the long range and the performance edition. This is your long range edition. And since I'm shooting this video at the end of 2022, we're gonna talk in 2023 numbers according to the Tesla website. So your Model Y long range starts at around $58,000 before options. This trim will get you 330 miles of range, a zero to 60 time of 4.8 seconds, and a top speed of about 135 miles per hour or you can step up to the Performance model, which of course is obviously your more powerful version of the Model Y. The Performance Edition starts around $62,000. Your range is decreased from the Long Range Edition because of, of course, is the high performance, 303 miles of range, top speed of 155 rather than 135, and a zero to 60 of 3.5 seconds. Now, sadly, this is not the performance editions, so our fastest acceleration time should be right around 4.8, which is still not slow. Now, as you can see, this particular Model Y is in white. Your two standard colors are white and silver on your Model Y, whether it's the long range or the performance. Any colors beyond that, you are gonna have an extra charge for. And a neat thing about this, versus its sibling, the Model 3, which is the sedan of roughly the same size, is instead of having all the chrome trim, it's mostly chrome, all your trim on this is black. Your window trim, your door handles, the trim on your mirrors, around your cameras, all black. And you can see whoever owned this before opted for this uh, stripe package on the bottom of it. Some may think it's tacky, I think it looks kinda neat, and it's not overdone, it actually looks pretty good. Now here you see the optional 20 inch induction wheels. That's the name of these that Tesla gives to these wheels. This comes standard with 19 inch wheels known as the Gemini wheels, but this is your optional induction wheel. This is a $2,000 option over the Gemini and it does give you a little bit less range as it's not quite as aerodynamic, but I think it looks a lot better than the Gemini. Now your performance model comes standard with 21 inch and let's see if I can say this Uber turbine wheels. Of course, they are just a little bit bigger than this, one inch. All right, now let's walk around the car like we usually do and check out the styling. We'll start here up front. Here's your lighting situation. You got kind of this uh, LED running lamp up top, full LED headlights like an electric car should have. And there's your signals down below. Pretty good looking. Down here in the bumper is where you're gonna find your side marker light and possibly even your fogs. And like how the side marker is set way in here, but it's most visible from over here. That's a really interesting touch. Of course, to go along with the rest of the black trim, you have your Tesla badge in black. Very good looking against the white, I think. Over here on the fender, of course, you got your side mount and turn signal light. Most cars nowadays have that. And below that is a little camera. You have one of those in each fender. And we're gonna see a lot of cameras on this vehicle as we walk around it. Up here on your B pillar is this little part right here. There's a camera inside of there keep that in mind. Stepping back to look at the profile of the car, it's a decent looking car and it's kind of sporty looking with that sloped roof line on it. We'll talk about what that does for headroom a little bit later in the video. Coming around the rear, you've got a uh, okay little wing back here. I'm not sure what that does for downforce, but it looks good. Of course, down here is your taillights, kind of a neat, interesting shape. Turn signals this little thin strip towards the outside of the vehicle. And here on the inside is where your reverse light is going to be. Stepping back here, going down, obviously you're gonna see there is no exhaust pipes and no sound to be made. It is an electric car. Once again, all the black badges, Tesla here and your dual motor badge right here. And coming back down the passenger side, identical to the driver's side. Once again, you got your side mounted signal and the camera below that. 
and you also have a camera in your passenger side B pillar as well. Another thing of note back here is the window tint on this car. It is incredibly dark. It is very dark. And it's not just because it's starting to get dark outside. This is very dark tint and it's gonna actually come in quite handy as we'll see once we get into the interior more. Up here, full glass roof, also very darkly tinted. That's gonna keep the sun from killing you on especially bright and hot days. All right, now let's talk about getting into the car because it's actually kind of interesting. Now your Teslas don't have a typical key. It, obviously they don't have an old school steel key like cars have always had, but it doesn't even have an electronic key fob. Instead, you use your phone. There's an app you download to your phone, you program it to the car, and that is your key. But what if you break your phone or what you're waiting for a replacement? Or what if someone's borrowing the car? What if it needs to be valeted? Well, you have this. This little credit card sized card comes with your Tesla. And this is what you use in place of your phone app. So I'll step back and you can see the car is locked, the mirrors are folded in. So how in the world do I use this to open the car? Well, right here in the middle of your B-pillar, you're gonna tap the card against it and it's gonna unlock. Now, if you get out of the car, you wanna lock it back. You can either, of course, lock it with the interior controls or tap it again and it will lock it right back up. All right, now let's actually get into the car. So we'll unlock it again. And you see it's got these flush mounted door handles. Of course, they are accented in black, so they're easy to find. But if you've never worked with a Tesla before, you're gonna wonder how in the world these work. Well, it's actually quite simple. You just push on the back of it here, and then you pull on this. And you can see the window actually indexes a little bit so that it doesn't mess up the trim around the door. And as you pull it open, you can see it is a frameless window. Of course, the handle just retracts back into the door, and you pull it open like any other door. All right, now that we're in the car, let's start looking at the interior. Now, the one word you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind for the interior of the Model Y is minimalist. Tesla did everything they could to make sure to keep this as minimalist as possible and still very modern and somewhat futuristic. So let's take a look at it. Now as you can see this is the door panel and your interior and this one is finished in black which is your standard color. You can also opt for a white interior which is a thousand dollars extra although I like black because you know your clothes can't mess it up it mess it up as easily. But on the doors you're only going to find just a few controls and those of course are first off your window controls your controls for all four windows and this button right here, which is actually your interior door release. Just push this button and the door will open up. Now you do have an emergency release, say if the battery dies or this button for some reason fails. In front of the door handles, you can just pull up on right here and it will open the door for you. Although you'll see in the bottom of the screen, it does throw up this warning saying that if you continue to use this, it could damage the window trim. So definitely only use that in an emergency. As we come across the interior, you can see this nice wood finish up ahead of the steering wheel. One thing you do not see ahead of the steering wheel is a gauge cluster. Your Model 3 and your Model Y do not have a driver facing gauge cluster screen, which is kind of strange. Almost every other car on the market, including Tesla Model S and Model X, have a screen up here, but not the 3 and not the Y. Now you do see one more thing ahead of the driver, and there is this big long gap that runs from one side of the car all the way to the other. That is your climate vent. I'll get more into that in a minute, but yes, that is your climate vent slash vents, still fully adjustable, but I'll show you how in a little bit. Here's your stocks, mostly standard stuff on your stock. You got to turn signals as some wiper and washer fluid controls. This stock over here is your gear selector. You got your park on a button and you're up, up for reverse, down for drive, that kind of thing. You can also use it to set cruise and autopilot. Looking at the steering wheel itself, this is actually kind of a little bit smaller than most of the steering wheels I've used up until now. Not a big deal though. It's cut nice and kind of thick though, so you do get a good grip on it. But you see, there's not a lot on this wheel. All you've really got is your horn, and you got a wheel, a scroll wheel over here, and a scroll wheel over here, and they are identical. And we'll get into what those are for in a minute. Over here in the center is the only screen that you get in this car. It is a massive screen, and this shows everything. And almost every single control is in this screen. There's a lot to show here. We'll get to that in a second. Now, on the passenger side, there is a glove box, although, as you can see, there's no immediately obvious glove box release. So what's up with that? Well, we come over here to the big screen and we tap on this Tesla icon down in the bottom. It's gonna pop up this panel here and right here is the is your glove box. So if you just tap this button, down comes your glove box. And it's a fairly sizable glove box. 
It's not huge, but it's definitely not the tiniest thing I've ever seen. Down here below the screen, you've got this section that's kind of divided and it looks like it's kind of lined in felt. This is actually a wireless charging pad and a place to store your phone. So you see if I drop my phone over here on the driver's side, it starts charging. Now the cool thing about the Model Y is if I pick it up off the driver's side and put it down on the passenger side, it still charges. Most cars only have one charging pad. It's either on the driver's side or somewhere centered in the console. This car has two, so you and your passenger can both wirelessly charge your phones, and that's actually very smart. No one's fighting over the wireless charger. You both have one. Coming back from there, if we slide this cover forward, you're gonna see there's a pretty deep storage area down here. It's got a rubber bottom in it. And if we pull this back, this is actually your upper storage tray. It's in two sections, and it can be lifted out if you just don't want it in there, if you need a little bit more room, or if you need to clean it. Lined in felt, feels good. Behind that, of course, dual cup holders. Definitely have to have that. If we push that forward and pull it back, that cover closes. It's a nice, pretty piece of wood. It does not look ugly at all. Behind there, if we open up our center console storage, check this out, another felt line tray here, and you've got another deep storage area down here with a light inside. Very nice, as well as a 12 volt round port. Now, if we come up, you're gonna see here's your rear view mirror. Nothing special about this. It is still a typical rear view mirror. I'm pretty sure Tesla has still not gone to a rear view camera system like General Motors and whatnot, but they really, really should. I'm kind of falling behind in that respect. And above that, there is another little camera in this interior. More cameras. Above that, you got a couple of dome lights. Just push those, they come on and off. Of course, I got the door open right now, so they're on. And in the center is your hazard light switch. While we're up here, let's take a look at the sun visor. Now, if we flip this down, the first thing I wanna point out is how these attach to the ceiling. So unlike most cars where this little barrel-shaped piece go actually fits into a plastic clip that over the years will break because of repetitive pulling it out and back into the clip, this just attaches via a magnet. This is magnetic. This is so smart. It just pull it on, pull it off. You don't have to worry about breaking that plastic clip like so many cars do with age. It's a magnet. Anyway, the other magnet here is for your mirror cover. You pull this down so it does a couple things. Once it's all the way open, the light comes on. But if you flip it back up, now that little flap isn't hanging down below your visor, obstructing your view while you're trying to put your makeup on while driving, which is already quite unsafe. I don't know, but hey, it's a cool design. Looking back from there, you have this massive piece of tinted glass above your head, runs all the way from front to back. This is a huge piece of glass. You can see everything above you. There's the street lights above the parking lot. This thing is huge. And of course, like I was saying outside the car, this is very heavily tinted. So if you're worried about having a large piece of glass over your head and getting a sunburn or just cooking, not to worry, this heavy tint definitely will help you. All right, stepping on in the rear, once again, your minimalist theme continues into the rear of the vehicle. You do have seating for three across in the back row, unless of course you want cup holders. Then you have to pull this down and that is where your cup holders are in this car. Here on the back of the driver's seat, you have a map pocket or whatever you want to use it for. And on the passenger seat, nice to see that more cars are returning to the days of having a pocket on the back of both seats and not just one. Here on the back of the center console, you do have your rear climate vents. However, they are just vents, there are no controls that is only controlled from the front, but you do have a couple of USB type C ports right below those vents. Up here, you've got your dome lights for the rear, for the back row. You just kind of push right above it and it turns on and off. Next to that, if you just push in right here, you have a spring loaded coat hook and we just kind of push on it again and it goes right back in. That's kind of a neat touch. It's not always hanging out and sticking out looking ugly. It's only there if you need it. All right, talking about sitting in the rear. Now I'm an average height individual, six foot, maybe just a little bit over. And you can see this seat is pretty close to where I'd be. I think it's got some settings that'll put it back into a different position. But still, I've got a decent amount of leg room back here. Of course, if there was someone much taller, that might be somewhat compromised, but it's not the worst place in the world. You don't have a mile of leg room where you can really stretch out, but it is decent. The best part about the back seat is right here, headroom. And that's where this big glass panel comes in because it, is, it sits so much higher than this trim line here. You see my head will actually bump into this trim line if I just kind of lean over. But this car being designed with this big glass panel gives you probably, you know, three to four more inches above your head, giving you actually really good headroom in the back of this car. Otherwise, somewhat comfortable back here. It's not a luxury car. That's not what the Model Y is about, but it's still fairly nice. You do have your charging capabilities 
and you actually do have three heated seats in the rear although the catch there is there's no controls back here for them they have to be controlled up front on the screen that's kind of unfortunate for rear seat passengers because in pretty much every other car that i know of the rear seat has controls another thing i really love about sitting in the back of this car and pretty much any electric car is there's no center hump in the middle of course there's no exhaust pipe or drive shaft that runs down the center of the vehicle it's just a flat battery pack on the bottom and therefore you get a flat floor there's no hump here there's nothing to bump your legs into and if you are sitting in the middle seat you've got all this floor to use you don't have to straddle this hump in the floor and intrude on the legroom of the other people now speaking of the center seat i don't know if you can tell but i can definitely tell you're not getting three large people back here if you're going to put three people back here they need to be somewhat slim or at least a person in the middle i'm sitting dead center in the middle seat and there's not a lot of room on the side seats granted i am not a small person but still it could be a little wider oh well all right now on to your model y cargo area now in order to get back here you do have a place on the center screen that you can tap or use your phone app or there is a button right here just push that button and it raises up all by itself and you can see you do get a pretty decent amount of cargo storage room in the back now it is sort of robbed as far as tall items are concerned with the sloping roof line but tesla still claims right around 76 cubic feet now whoever had this thing before um i guess bought this quilted line quilted leather something ish liner to put back here i want to see if i can get this out to show you the features of this cargo space And it looks like that just secures with Velcro. Now, first off, if you're looking at this, you get a nice flat load floor again. Once again, electric car. You got a couple of nice deep cubbies on either side. You can put stuff down in there. I mean, here's my whole arm going into this thing. Now, if I lift up on the strap right here, you can see, you're gonna see even more storage below that. Very, very deep storage. I mean, up to my elbow, pretty much. One of the benefits of electric cars, you can get deeper storage in here. Right. Now, I had to pull back some more of this uh, quilted trunk liner. To pull up this other panel but if we pull up this panel ahead of the one i just lifted yeah it's a little challenging because there's not a handle there is actually a little bit more storage below that i did have to pull out the quilted trunk liner to be able to do that because it is one solid piece and you're not going to be able to lift this independently of this one but you do get a little bit more storage back there it's a great place for your charging cables or what have you speaking of your charging cable here it is it comes in this nice tesla branded bag because of course it does pretty beefy cable of course you are charging an electric car but that's where your charging cables are stored uh, now that i've got the trunk liner back down we'll finish talking about the rear now your second row seats do fold down you can either do that from inside the rear door using these handles on the top of the seat or you got these little switches right here if you pull that it'll fold the seats down now that's only good for putting them down here's the other side that's only good for putting them down you do have to put them back up from inside the rear doors but it is nice and handy, very convenient. If you're back here with a large load and you're like, oops, I forgot to put the seat down, you can just flip the switches and do that. Now, another interesting touch about this rear cargo area is say you have to transport something long and narrow, but you've got two kids in the back and you really need to carry them around too. We just pull this handle on the back of the th center seat. You can drop just that down. And now if you need to get some lumber back here, maybe six foot boards, maybe some skis, uh, what have you you can just feed that right through the middle no problem and you still have two rear seat passengers kind of neat and really not a lot of cars do that this little post here where the seat latches onto may become a little bit intrusive depending on how you're using this feature but still definitely a unique feature and uh, not something you usually see in a car now zoomed out from the cargo area to talk about something you're you don't see in this particular example and that is the optional third row seats so yes your model y you can option with third row seating seating for two more people takes your seating capacity from five to seven now that is a three thousand dollar option and i imagine that probably eliminates that forward floor panel now i've watched a video or two online and from what they're saying as far as adults are concerned if you adjust the second row seats right you do get some pretty decent room of course the second row seats are replaced with sliding second row seats with a little bit more adjustability to make it easier to get into the third row but from what i saw in that video leg room is halfway decent but as far as headroom is concerned if you're even relatively tall your head will be hitting this back glass here but i have a feeling the majority of people probably aren't going to spend the three thousand dollars on that option because uh 
You buy an SUV for cargo space. At least that's what we buy it for. Now, before we get into all the rest of the front features as far as tech is concerned, I want to talk about how you start your Model Y because it's actually kind of unique from pretty much any other car. Like I said before, with Tesla, there is an app that you download to your phone, program it to the car, that is your key. When you get in with your phone, hit the brake, everything comes to life, it recognizes it's you, and you're ready to take off. But like I also said before, what if you don't have your phone or someone else is borrowing it? Here's that key card again. So as you can see right now, I'm holding the key card in my hand. If I hit the brake, it's gonna tell me tap key card. So how you do that is you take your key card and you just kind of set it here behind the cup holders. Now when you hit the brake, everything starts coming to life. And it sets all your configurations, your seat position, your steering wheel position, everything to the way you had it set up before. Now let's go back and talk about these steering wheel controls because like I said before, they're kind of interesting. Now by default, these steering wheel controls control your stereo. So you see if I move this wheel up and down, it's going to adjust my volume here on the screen. And if I push the button, it's gonna completely mute it. If I push it again, it unmutes, although it's not really showing that very well, but that is how mute and unmute works, is just to push on the button. Once again, up is volume up, down is volume down. Now this button, this one here on the right side, really doesn't seem to do anything. Although if I push it, you get voice commands. We're gonna try to leave that alone, or just see what the car does when I talk, when I talk into it. Oh look, it gives me voice commands instructions. But that's not all that these things control. Now check this out, if I get on here and touch this Tesla icon, and you can see it's kind of getting dark outside, so it's turned itself to dark mode. Really cool. I think I can turn that to keep it on light. That way it's a little easier to see everything for the video. Anyway, if I go here to mirrors, if I tap on this, you can see it's giving me instructions. Now I select my left or my right mirror, and suddenly this button becomes up, down, left, and right for your mirror. Now you can see I'm gonna select the right side mirror, and as I roll the, the button upwards, the mirror goes up, down, left, and right but wait there's more below that mirrors button is a steering button and now if i roll this wheel up the steering wheel will go up down for down apparently i had it up adjusted all the way up to begin with turn it to push it to the left and it telescopes towards you push it to the right and it telescopes away from you so i do like that that's really cool that they have just these two buttons but they do oh so much all right now let's talk about this massive center screen which once again is pretty much your only point of referencing anything or controlling anything in your model y now first of all to the left is pretty much where all your pertinent information is going to be when you're driving your speed will be displayed up here here it's got your range estimate in the top right hand corner some headlight controls here's the positioning of your gear indicator whether you're in partner to drive whatever down here you see this picture of the car with a few controls we tap this button right here you're going to lock the car unlock it you got the button to open your frunk and to open your trunk as well as your charging port. You can see right here, you got a big, huge map. Very, very detailed map. Here's a satellite view and you can pretty much tell exactly where I'm sitting. It's pretty daggum accurate and very detailed. Very nice, vivid map. Extremely responsive to your touch. No problem there, just like a smartphone. If we tap this button down here in the bottom left corner, that Tesla shaped icon, Here's gonna, here are some controls and settings. Now it starts in your controls tab. Here's your headlight settings if you wanna do anything other than auto headlights. Of course, we saw the glove box button a second ago. Here's your window lockout, your child lockout for the rear doors. Instead of having manual switches back there, you've got that. You can manually fill the mirrors. You've got your wiper controls, your speeds, or just put them on auto because it does have auto wipers. Of course, there's those buttons I just showed you for adjusting the mirrors and steering wheel. And here's a button for sentry mode. Now, if you remember all those cameras I showed you on the outside of the car, on the fenders, on the door pillars, you got the one above the rear view mirror, there's a few more cameras outside. That's what these are mainly for, is for your sentry mode. These cameras are pretty much always recording. If you set sentry mode and park the car in a parking lot or a parking garage or wherever, it will continuously monitor the activity inside and outside of the car. And when something happens, it's going to record it and it's going to save it. And you can go back and actually watch those clips to see what happened if someone came by and scratched your car, hit it with a grocery cart, backed into it, or tried to break in, whatever, it's going to show you that. If we go down here to pedals and steering, of course, here under acceleration, these are pretty much your drive modes. You got chill, which is your more relaxed, more subdued driving mode. Um, in your long range, you've got standard mode. In your performance model, that's going to be more of a sport mode because it is the more performance-oriented model. 
Here's your steering mode. You can just decide what steering feel you want. If you want it nice and easy and comfortable, or if you want a more responsive, sporty steering feel. Stopping mode is interesting. So you got creep, roll, and hold. If you leave it on hold, then what's going to happen is when you come to a stop light or something and you release the brake, it's not going to move whatsoever until you tap the accelerator. Now you can also, now of course you can put it on creep. Now of course, if you prefer the feel of a traditional automatic transmission vehicle, you're just coming out of an automatic gas powered vehicle into this and you're like, I don't like it not moving when I release the pedal, you can put it in roll or creep. And when you release the pedal, it'll start to somewhat roll just like a car with an automatic transmission. Down here in charging, you get a large view of your battery percentage. You can see right up here, it's sitting at 117 miles of range right now. You've got a button to open your charge port door and all kinds of different settings for charging your car. Here's your Tesla Autopilot. Right now it's got auto steer beta, so it'll steer in the lines. If you hit full self-driving vis visualization, it's gonna display additional objects in your driving vis visualizations, including traffic lights, stop signs, and road markings and whatnot. I don't believe this car has a full self-driving. That's like a $15,000 option, but it does still have a beta form of your auto steer. Now if come down here to the service tab. You're going to see the top down view of the car with your individual tire pressures right there, right there. Easy to read. Scroll down. You've got your owner's manual in the infotainment system. No physical books anymore. Um, car wash mode is interesting. It says here, car wash mode closes all windows, locks the charge port, and disables windshield wipers, sentry mode, walker away, door locks, and parking sensor chimes. For automatic car washes with conveyor belts, the free roll option shifts to neutral and prevents the parking brake from automatically applying if you leave. I don't know why you would leave. Car wash mode will exit at the vehicle speed exceeds 10 miles per hour. So it's kind of cool. You can put it in a mode specifically made for taking it through a car wash. Definitely don't see that on very many cars. Now, if I tap down here where it says 72 degrees, this is your climate control readings. You do have dual zone, one here, one there. You're going to get this large detailed display of your climate controls. Now, right now we're set on the front. You got all your controls for your power, your auto, your air positioning, that kind of thing. Here's your fan speeds. Here's your defrost settings. Now, if you can see, there's kind of this visualization on this image of air coming from in front of the steering wheel, coming from in front of the passenger. And this is actually where you adjust where your air is coming out. So you can see if I start tapping on this and if I just kind of drag it towards the center, now you see the air is more concentrated towards my face. I can then drag this outwards. It'll spread out. I can drag it up or down and redirect the air however I want it to go. Same on the passenger side, you can pull it in and out, up and down. So that's kind of interesting. So if you're wondering how in the world you adjust the positioning of the that huge climate vent that runs from one side to the other, that's actually how that's done. Down here, you've got your heated seat control for the front. You can see there's one, two, three levels of heated seat for driver and passenger. Here you have a heated steering wheel. Over here to the right, you got a few modes. Here's, you got keep, dog, and camp. I'm gonna talk about dog and camp. If you put this thing in dog mode, here's what it says right here. Dog mode enabled, climate and screen will stay on after you exit. So what dog mode is for is exactly what it sounds like. If you have a pet, you need to leave them in the car, but you don't want people busting out your windows. You don't want to risk their life by leaving them, leaving them locked in the car. You set dog mode and check it out. When I exit the car, it actually shows on the screen that it is in dog mode. It says, don't worry, the driver will be back and it displays the current temperature inside the car so that if a passerby does walk by your car, they see there's a dog in there, even through the heavily tinted glass. If they actually look carefully, they're going to see that screen. It's going to tell them, hey, don't worry, please don't bust out my windows. The dog is fine. That's actually a really nice feature. I do, I really do like that. Now your other feature here is camp mode. So if you tap on that, this is gonna be interesting. So if you do actually plan to sleep in your car, you can actually set your climate control to whatever temp and it will maintain that climate with the car on until your battery drops to 20%. Now, according to this, it says it will disable sentry mode, security alarm and walk away lock since you're gonna be in the vehicle. But kind of cool, if you do intend to camp in this thing, and I guess you could if you really wanted to, it actually has a mode for that. Now right here, now, now back over to the left, you're going to see the, these two tabs, front and rear. Currently, we're on front settings. If we tap the rear, here it pulls up the top down view of the car. You got your rear settings now. You turn on or off the rear fan and you can control the rear heated seats. Now, once again, like I was saying a few minutes ago, you cannot control the rear heated seats in the rear of the vehicle, which is very strange. You control them right here. One, two, three. And yes, three, unlike most other cars, you do have a heated center seat, which is kind of cool. And each one has three levels of heating. So kind of cool. You do have five heated seats in the, in this car. It is kind of unfortunate and definitely not on par with most other cars that you can't control them in the rear. Now we tap down here on the bottom of the screen, the center button is going to pull up this menu and you got all kinds of cool stuff. So if we go into theater here, you see here, you can actually watch things on your car. 
Netflix, Hulu, YouTube. Let's see if I can get uh, see if I can get this to load. Oh, there it loaded. Let's see that car vlog channel. Look at that. It even auto populates. I've gotten that far with my channel, and there I am, and it's playing my intro video. Oh, let's see. Let's hear. Oh, let's play this nifty uh, Beretta GTZ video. Oh, and look, it's playing my Beretta GTZ video on the screen, pumped through the audio system. That is awesome. Anyways, back to the menu. You get a lot of other neat stuff. Of course, you got your calendar. You can pull that up, although it's not really showing me anything. You have, do actually have a web browser in this thing. So if you want to browse the internet while you're parked, you can absolutely do that as well. How cool is that? Uh, if we go to this tab, it's going to show your energy consumption for the car. Kind of neat. It's going to have a nice little breakdown up, breakdown to show you how you've been using the battery. Now we tap on arcade, pull that up. You have a bunch of different games. You've got Sonic, you've got Sudoku, you've got Solitaire, Backgammon. But I think the greatest thing in the world is the Beach Buggy Racing. This thing is really cool. It is a racing game that, that you play using your Tesla's steering wheel. So let's do and demonstrate that because that is really cool. And yes, you do. You really use your Tesla steering wheel to control in the game. Look at this. I am driving a Tesla on a Tesla screen. I'm not very good at it. In fact, I'm quite terrible at it really. But still, if you're sitting in a parking lot, your wife's in the mall or getting her hair done or something and you're just bored, hey, you can play games on your car. Man, I'm really, really bad at this. Oh, oh, but hey, I'm in second place, so it must not be that bad. Oh, no, I just lost position. Oh, and I crashed. Yeah, I'm not very good at this whatsoever. And there goes the lamppost. And I'm in fourth place because I'm terrible at this game. Hey, but I got a bubble. Whatever that's supposed to do. Oh, second position. And I'm in the water. That's going to slow me down. Got some beach chairs. No problem. Oh, I'm in the lead. Oh my God, I'm in the lead. Anyway, enough of that. We go back to that tab, click on toy box, and you get a lot of other neat stuff. So here's our colorizer. You can change the color of your car's exterior, which is okay, cool. Uh, boom box. Emissions. This is a, um, this is a fart maker. This is a whoopee cushion thing. So you can choose what fart you want and it will make said fart. I don't know if you can hear that. But you can also tell it to fart on demand if you press the left scroll wheel or fart on signal. That's okay. That's kind of childish, but hey, it's there if you're into it. Let's go ahead and turn those off. Although it'd be really fun to leave those on for the next person to get in the car. Tracks, you can actually mix audio in your car, which is kind of cool. Romance. If you and the significant other just want to sit back in your Tesla at the drive-thru and watch a movie and have a nice cozy campfire in front of you, you can. Cool part is it actually turns the heat on coming out of the climate vents, so it actually kind of, in a way, feels like you're sitting in front of a fire. That's, uh, oh, hello. I tapped the screen and now I'll get seductive music. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I did not see that coming. Sketch pad, you can doodle in your car. This is kind of cool. Mars, um, if we enable that, check out what this does. This turns your map into the surface of Mars. That's quite interesting. Let's go and turn that off. Once again, should leave that on for the next person. But the coolest feature in this entire system is right here. It is light show. So if we push start show here and we get up and set the volume to max, let's get out of the car close the doors and see what this does. This is really, really cool. All right, so I've activated light show. I get out of the car, close the door, and it will begin. And I have volume set on max. So you see, it puts the windows down so you can hear.
So yes, it plays an amazing Christmas tune that I can only assume is by Trans-Siberian Orchestra. <laughs> that is really, really cool. All right, now the great thing about most electric cars and your Tesla being no exception is that because there's no engine up front, you get a front trunk or a frunk. Now in order to access this, you either of course hit the control on your phone app if you have it downloaded or from inside the car, just tap here and the frunk will pop right open. And once it's popped open, there's no secondary release. You just lift right up and here is your front cargo area, your frunk. And if we look down here, there is a fairly decent amount of cargo room, obviously not insane amounts, but this is some of the best cargo room in an electric vehicle, other than of course the F-150 Lightning. But you can see here, it's got a little place to store your tow hook. He's got the little emergency release button in case somebody gets kidnapped in here. Other than that, just a place to add washer fluid and that's really about it. But once again, that's the cool thing about electric cars, you get additional storage in most of them up front because there is no internal combustion engine. All right, before we take off on the test drive, I wanna talk about and putting it into gear. Now, much like a Mercedes, it does have this stock on the left side. Instead of it being a wiper stock, it's how you engage park neutral drive, that kind of thing. Not necessarily a gear selector because there's no gears, it's an electric car. Quite easy, just hit the brake, up twice for reverse, down twice for drive. One little click in the middle puts you in neutral and this button on the end will put you into park. Now while we're playing around with this, let's put it in drive and show you the intro, this cool little touch on the screen. Put door in drive, here you can see this is the, of course, the rearward view of the car in real time. You can even see right here, it's showing an SUV parked right there because of course the system in these cars can recognize cars around you and actually what they are. That's not just a generic car, it's an SUV. Anyway, if you look closely, you can see I'm on the brakes and the brakes are lit up. If I hit the turn signal, you can see the little signal on the back of the car blinking. How cool is that? If I put it in reverse, it actually gives you a top down view of the car instead of the rearward view. So the only light you really see on there is the third brake light in the back window. Put it in park, it all rotates back around to that uh, corner view right there. Now I wanna talk about the turn signals in this car because they are actually kind of interesting. So here's your turn signal stock. And what's interesting is if you push it down to activate, let's say push it down to activate left, it returns to its position. But if you could feel that click, it's actually two click. And you can see right now the blinker is blinking. If I wanna cancel that, I can of course either take a turn and straighten the wheel out, or I can just kind of push on it one click in either direction and it'll cancel the signal. But another neat thing happens when you activate the signal. We turn it on, it pops up with a blind spot camera display down here in this, on the screen. This of course is using the camera in the fender of the car. If we activate the right signal, then it gives you the other side. And now we can see that uh, neat Ford Raptor behind us. Cancel it and of course it goes away. This is a really cool feature. I like that it gives you a blind spot view. Unfortunately, with this car only having the big center screen, the only place they have to put that is in the center screen. Whereas with say your Hyundais and Kias, because they have it a gauge cluster, they can actually put that view right here in front of you. Now Tesla does have the same setup in the Model S, the larger sedan, where you get the blind spot view, but they, in the Model S, have a gauge cluster screen in front of the wheel. Unfortunately, they did not put your blind spot camera view in the gauge cluster screen, they still put it in the center display, which on one hand, I don't think is the smartest thing in the world because you do still have to look to the side to see your blind spot and you're trying to safely merge, especially if you're trying to merge left and you're looking over here in the middle of the car, that's a little bit inconvenient. But on the flip side of that, you know, the center screen software is probably mostly the same between this and the Model S. So why not just do the same thing for both cars? Finally, let's talk about reversing in this car. So hit the brake, throw it in reverse. And here on the screen pops up a big rear view camera. And this is a really nice camera. See if I turn the wheels, the trajectory lines will turn with it. I can also pull up the two side view cameras. So you can see those same cameras that were just giving us blind spot views are now displaying down below the rear view. So you get three very good views behind you while you're backing the car up. In addition, of course, to your side view mirrors and your rear view, making this just as safe as possible for backing the car up. And then on the left side of the screen, of course, it's still gonna show you cars around you if it picks them up and it'll show you if you're about to hit something. For example, right here, if I kind of zoom in here, you see there's this little red line in front of the front left corner of the car. That's because it's seeing my tripod sitting there and it's telling me, hey, um, you're, you're gonna hit something. So it's kind of cool. It gives you all those, all those alerts right there in the screen next to your backup camera. Now there's one more interesting thing the car does when you put it in reverse. So as we all know, most electric cars for the most part are completely silent. They don't make any noise when you're rolling forward or backwards. But for pedestrian safety, 
Tesla and other electric automakers are required to make the car make a sound because say you're in a parking lot backing up, somebody's walking behind your car. If you're in a gasoline powered car, most likely they're gonna hear you and they're gonna say, hey, there's a car running, is it backing up? But with this thing, you can't hear it. So it's required to make a noise to alert people, hey, this thing's backing up. And it's kind of an interesting noise. Check this out. All right, time to drive the Tesla Model Y long range. Now, right now I'm kind of sitting in traffic waiting on a red light, but it's a great time to talk about driving this thing in traffic. So right now, of course, I've got the braking mode on hold. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna pretty much offer you one pedal driving. I push, I hit the gas, it takes off, let off a little bit, it decelerates, come completely off it. And of course, it'll break the car down to zero miles an hour. So I'm actually sitting here at a red light in traffic my feet are completely nowhere near the pedals and I am at a dead stop, brake lights are on as if I were holding the brakes on a gasoline powered car. Another neat thing of course, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at the screen, it's recognizing the lane lines on either side of me, it's recognizing the cars, it's recognizing there's a sedan up here, a pickup truck over there, an SUV over there. It's really, really cool. You can even see the traffic lights as they get closer, whether they're red or green or there's a green arrow. Really a neat kind of a cool very sophisticated system i do like it before i get to a spot where i can really give it the beans i'll talk about what it's like just generally driving the car as far as comfort is concerned it's decent now i will say i'm kind of a bigger guy so you know with my big butt in these seats it's a little bit tight i've definitely driven cars with a lot more room in the seats and i don't just mean old 80s and 90s things with cushy bench seats i've driven bucket seats that offer more room for my big butt although that's not really such a big deal. It's still nice you got the heated seats up here. It's not a bad car to drive at all. Of course everything's fully adjustable, steering wheel seats just like any modern vehicle, so you can really set it up however you need it. Interesting looking at the speed up here in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Most automotive journalists actually kind of knock that as being, you know, it's kind of out of the way to have to look at that. It's not very convenient. You should at least have a heads-up display if you're not going to have a gauge screen. And while I don't find that to be the absolute worst place there is, I mean, it could be worse. It could be way over here on the right side. It could be on the bottom. They put it right here in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. So it's just a very slight movement of the eye to uh, see that speedometer up in the upper left-hand corner. Although I will agree with the journalists, such as Doug DeMuro and others, who wish that Tesla would put a head-up display in their cars. And regardless of what your gauge situation is in the car, whether you do have a gauge screen in front of you or it is strictly on this center screen, every vehicle should have a heads-up display, especially something that costs $60,000. It should it should not even be an option. It should be in there a heads-up display, or at least I think so, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who thinks that. Talking about visibility, I'll try to give you a decent idea of that before I completely run out of daylight because once again, I'm pushing time to drive this car. Anyways, out the sides, obviously great. Out the front, great, no problem. You got this big glass panel above you so you can see up to the sky. Um, you can see the stars if it wasn't so cloudy outside right now. Probably the worst visibility is out the rear window. It's a very, very narrow view out the rear window because that window is sloped so much that you really don't get a whole lot of visibility out of it. Now, it's not like you're completely blind. It's, it's not like driving a C8 Corvette where the window's this big. You do get decent visibility. As far as acceleration, of course, I'm not in a great spot to test that right now. I do have the car in chill mode and it's, it's actually all right. You push the gas and it'll still take off very nicely. It's not gonna pin you to the seat, but you can definitely feel the acceleration, the instant torque of the electric car. Push it again, we're in chill mode. And you can see the natural movement of what happens when I press on the gas or the accelerator, this is not a gas vehicle. And I really do like the ability to use one pedal drive in the vehicle, it's really neat. I've already done this once before on the Mustang Mach-E. I drove a first edition for the channel. Um, if you haven't seen that yet, go check out the review on that. This is actually my second electric car on the channel, which is awesome. Anyway, I really do like the one pedal drive in these electric cars. It's such a neat feature and it's so convenient. You don't have to switch your foot back and forth between pedals and it takes almost no time to get used to. It might take more time for others depending on, you know, how long you've been driving gas cars, which most of us is gonna be most of our lives. 
or at least most of the majority of the time that we've been able to drive cars but it's a really cool feature and i really do like it and of course if you're using the one pedal drive feature on your car that also preserves your brake life your brakes will last so much longer on an electric car if you can use the one pedal drive and also you get the regenerative braking of course which will send a little bit of power back into the battery pack whenever you brake or slow down and it's actually kind of interesting i don't know if you can see it up on the top of the screen above the speedometer there's this bar that runs across the left hand side and whenever i accelerate it, throw, it sends a black line off to the right to show how hard i'm accelerating how intense I, how intensely i'm accelerating then when i come off the accelerator it actually shoots a green line over to the left i assume representing the regenerative regenerative braking and how intensely it's sending power back to the battery And there I just made that merge and it did give me the blind spot camera in on the screen which was nice but it's exactly how I thought I'm looking in my mirror trying to merge left and the blind spot display is over here to the right of the wheel which is definitely not ideal I think that Hyundai and Kia do it much better they have the gauge screen in front of you and it doesn't matter if you have the full screen gauge cluster or just the physical gauges in the center screen it still gives that blind spot in front of you behind the steering wheel right below your line of sight instead of way over here on the opposite side of the wheel now when you're making a right hand merge it may not be so bad i haven't done a right hand merge yet but when you're making a right hand merge everything's on the right side of the vehicle of course there is still a distance between the mirror and the camera display on the screen De definitely not the greatest way of doing this definitely not the most ideal implementation of a blind spot camera on a car but at least it's there i do think more and more automakers need to start putting blind spot cameras on their cars especially as more and more cars have full di fully digital gauge clusters in the in front of the driver it definitely be a great feature and definitely a great way to make the cars much safer and right now i'm just kind of cruising along at highway speeds keeping with traffic and i gotta say the ride quality in this car is not bad it's not the cushiest thing in the world. It's not a luxury car. Of course, this isn't a luxury model from Tesla. This is, of course, your lower level, more affordable model, the Model Y. But it's also, also not a very harsh ride. It actually feels pretty nice in here. This car, you could definitely road trip. Although with electric cars, you do have the whole issue of charging for a long road trip, but that's a whole nother story I'm not gonna get into. Pretty much everyone on the internet has already gotten into that story. But I do think this will make a great commuter car. I mean, you still get 330 miles of range. If you have a long commute to work, you can use this thing a few days in a row. It's not, it's not gonna kill you to drive it a long distance. It actually feels pretty nice. All right, switching the acceleration mode over to standard instead of chill. Now, once again, this doesn't have the sport mode because this is not the performance model, it's the long range. But still, we're doing 65. Let's go ahead and bury it and see what it does. That's a difference that is quite a difference actually that is wow that is quick and this isn't even the fast model this is not the performance model but that's still pretty quick wow i'm gonna do that again bury it yeah buddy that is not bad i kind of want to drive the performance model now all right now i do want to get the zero to 60 in this thing see just and feel just how fast this thing is from a stop now tesla claims 4.8 seconds in this long range model 3.5 in the performance model so unfortunately we're not going to get below four seconds but we should get below five and let's just go for it yeah i believe every word of the 4.8 this thing is quick this thing is fast <laughs> even though it's not the performance model and the, when you saw me put my head in the seat i promise you that was not an exaggeration this thing is I like electric cars. And that's not to say that I'm not saddened by the fact that the auto industry is pretty much being forced to slowly kill off internal combustion, because I am. I love my big V8s. I love the roar of huge engines, V8s, V12s. I like turbos, I like superchargers. Of course, as a car guy, I love all that. But even if you're not a fan of electric cars, there's one thing you have to admit. These things are nuts. God, they accelerate so well. And even if you're not the biggest fan of Tesla as a company or Elon Musk or whatever, there's no denying the fact that they make fast, fun to drive cars. They really do. This thing is, I enjoy this thing. Now all I need to do is get my hands on a Model S Plaid. 
That would definitely be something. Oh, and look, the display's in dark mode now because it's getting to be dark outside. I don't know if you can see, but the image of the car driving on the screen, the headlights are on in, on the image. I love the little details that Tesla put into this thing. Just little Easter eggs. You know, the, 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 yes, they probably drove up the cost by putting in things that it didn't need, you know, like arcades and a light show and a fart noise maker. Or even this thing that shows that the, the shows the lights on the display. It could just simply show cars and shapes. But they really put a lot of thought and time and detail into this thing. Yeah, that may be part of what drove up the cost. But still, this is... I mean, it's, it's cool. It's really neat to see stuff like this. Turn the interior light on, see if that helps. The last thing I want to talk about is how the car handles. So I'm just going to take this turn here. Excuse my stuff sliding around in the back. This thing actually handles pretty well for a crossover SUV. Of course, this being the SUV version of the Model 3 sedan being a little bit taller, this thing still handles pretty well. I mean, I'm not I'm barely getting any body roll. Being a crossover, you're still going to get some body roll, but very very minimal. This thing handles really nicely. The steering is pretty much immediate. It does what you tell it to pretty much when you tell it to. And yeah, it handles pretty good. And that's another thing that these electric cars have going for them is with the battery packs down on the bottom under the floor. That center of gravity is so low that you can get better handling characteristics out of an electric car because all the weight is down low. Man, this thing is something I really, really like this car. Anyways, y'all, that's gonna do it for the 2022 Tesla Model Y long range model. Special thanks once again to Twin City Certified of Maryville, Tennessee for providing this vehicle for this review today. Once you're done here, be sure to check them out at the link in the description below. Send them some business because, uh, well, they deserve it for being so amazing and lending me this car. Also, if you like this video and want to see more like it, go back to the channel and check out what else I've got. I've got other car reviews that you might like. And if you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, be sure to follow on Facebook and Instagram at That Car Vlog Channel. It's another great way to get notified when a new video goes up. And if you have anything you'd be willing to let me review and drive on the channel, whether it be new, weird, cool, rare, whatever, hit me up at my email address in the description box below. And uh, maybe we'll try to work something out because I'm definitely interested in growing this channel with more and more car reviews. Anyways, thanks you guys so much for watching and you have a great one. Okay, just one more. <sighs> Incredible.